what Sheikh Al Fawzan presents as the Order of the Walis. This is important. The Order of the Walis. Abuha, her father, number one. We'll put numbers on them. Wawasiyuhu fiha. Her father, and along with her father is whoever her father wants to be his representative. Before we go to someone taking the right of wilaya, of being the wali from someone to someone else, we go to the, the father is out of the country and can't be there for the marriage. He's out of the country indefinitely. So the local judge decides we need a wali here. So he contacts the father and he ensures that he's talking to the father. And the father says, locally, I appoint brother Anwar Abdu to be my representative. So Anwar Abdu now steps in as the wali in front of the grandfather, the uncles, and all the other male relatives here because he's the wasi. He is the, the wakil of the father. He's the representative of the father. So the father or the representative of the father. Now for every rank, we're going to add that same thing, whoever that person would appoint in his place. That's always valid no matter who the wali would be, whoever that wali would appoint to represent him in his absence. And if you think with flexible fiqh, dear brothers and sisters, this is something that can open up a lot of ease for a whole lot of people. A lot of times, there's a father who's really stubborn, and he doesn't want his daughter to marry anyone. Maybe he's got cultural restrictions. Maybe he's facing pressure from other family members. He's worried about who marries his daughter. So he's thinking only this country or this nationality or this ethnicity. Things are getting difficult on the girl now. She's complaining like, years are going by now and I'm not getting married. And like everyone that comes, my father's disqualifying them. And he's just being really strict and stubborn. Maybe he's traveling a lot on top of that. And things are getting real difficult on this girl. She's starting to think, I need to maybe request someone to step in here and maybe do something. Would it be wise to try to disqualify him? Or could somebody think about flexible fiqh? What if somebody just talked to him and said, you're a busy man, you're always traveling, right? Why not appoint your brother? You know, the girl's favorite uncle, someone who he trusts in the family, who's there, who maybe is a little more flexible and more ready to help her get married. And you just calmly and with his agreement, with cooperation, with a good invitation, you get him to appoint someone in his family that he's happy with. Especially if it's in the family, it's real easy. Getting him to appoint the brother at the masjid, he might feel like they're stripping me of my guardianship of my own daughter. No, get him to pick his own brother, the uncle of the girl. You know, someone else in the family, his father, the grandfather, something like that. Just appoint someone else. So when the man appoints another wali, whether it's family or outside of the family, he stands in the place of that wali. So think about this when you see these kinds of cases and your advice is being sought. Why don't we just talk to the father and see if he can pass that, you know, that guardianship on to somebody in the family. And then things get a lot easier for the sister. After the father is the grandfather. And up. Meaning, or the great-grandfather, or the great-great-grandfather, whoever's alive. And we mean here paternal or maternal? Paternal, the father of the father, or the father of the father of the father, the great-grandfather, and so on. So we mean paternal, the father's father, the grandfather. Then after the grandfathers, the ibn, the son, the son. nazal. What do I mean by that? And even if it goes down further, the grandson. You don't laugh. There's old ladies. They're 60 years old. They want to get married. What's wrong? And they've had children, and they've had husbands, and... They'd like to get married. Can they get married? Yes, of course they can. So it might be a case where there's a grandson who's a wali for his grandmother, and he's marrying his grandmother to somebody. And remember what I mentioned about the manners of a son, or a grandson even in this case, being the wali for his mother. He's not going to be authoritative and take a position of authority over his mother. He's going to be an approving wali and try to facilitate whatever his mother or grandmother wants. So then we have the son, and of course, each and every rank, as I said, or the representative of the person, in parentheses for each and every one of these. So the son, then the grandson, and down. Great grandson, if that's possible. Then her brother, from her full blood brother, from both parents. There are three types of brothers. The full brother, half brother from the father's side, half brother from the mother's side. 
The first one is the full blood brother. Now, just as a little tip here, a little point, each case, there may be more than one person in this rank. So a woman may have eight brothers. Which brother then? The oldest. And then when the oldest brother is not available, the oldest full brother is not available. Do we go to the oldest half brother from the father's side? No, we go to the second oldest full brother. And we exhaust all of the full blood brothers before we go to the half brother from the father's side. Clear? And of course, at each and every rank or the representative of that person. Then her nephews, the nephew firstly from the full blood brother, meaning her brother's children, her brother's son, her full blood brother's sons. Then if there are none of those, then her half brothers from the father's side, sons, her nephews, her paternal nephews or the children of her full blood brother. Yes. Does not include brothers from the mother's side, no. The nephew? Yeah, the nephew being the children of the full blood brother. When I say children, I mean the male children. The sons of the full blood brother. Those are nephews in the order of their seniority. Then if there are none of those, then the nephews who are the children of the half-brother from the father's side. And then no consideration given to the children from the brother from the mother's side only. Then the uncle, paternal or maternal? Paternal uncle. Uncle from the father's side. The father's brother. Then the father may have ten brothers like that. Then the oldest paternal uncle all the way down then to the youngest paternal uncle. And then those are exhausted. Then the children of the uncles. Here you say, wait a minute, whoa. The children of the uncles, what are they called? Cousins. Wait a minute. What happened here? We've separated from being mahram and awali. Everybody up until this point was mahram and wali. Family member and awali. Now we're going into wilaya. You can be a wali for a woman that is not mahram for you. Your cousin is not a mahram. You are not allowed to be alone with your female cousins, young men. Young ladies, you are not allowed to be in the presence of your male cousins, be they from the father or the mother, father's side or the mother's side. Whether they're the closest cousin or the distant cousins, they are not maharam. They are not close family relatives to you. So how then can he be the wali? Here, if you notice, no father, no uncle, no nephews, no uncles, no grandfather, no children. We're getting to the point of a need now. There's like basically nobody left in the family here. Yeah, so now we have the cousins. And of course the cousins here are from the, the father's side. Cousins from the father's side. Then in the absence of that, the sheikh says, Aqrabu al-Asaba. The closest of all inheriting relatives beyond that. In the order of how people inherit. Then the mu'tiq, if there is a mu'tiq, which is strange for us, the one who freed that family or that specific person, he will have the right of being the wali. If that person was in slavery and then freed, really not too relevant to our Western society. And then lastly, al-hakim, al-shar'i, the judge. The judge, meaning the official, established judge, the one appointed to take care of the ladies that don't have mahrams for marriage or walis for marriage. So then she presents herself to the court and asks that a wali be appointed for her as she has no wali. Now, of course, you can add to all this list that each and every one of them has to have the same religion. And each and every one of them has to qualify in that religion. Meaning, each and every one has to be a Muslim for a Muslim girl. And he has to be a practicing Muslim and not a fasik who would, you know, prevent good men from marrying the girl. So he has to be someone of concern, someone who has her interests in mind, not someone who is, you know, like that uncle who hates this girl. And so, so long as he's the wali, she's never getting married. So in this case, then he gets disqualified. So he has to be a man of concern from the family, not a man of animosity and hatred for her, or a man of disobedience, or a disbeliever, or someone on other than her religion. And again, each one may allow someone to be the substitute for him or his representative.